G'day guys, I'm Morgan Z, and today we're going to talk about Strombot. And Sound, the best bot to control your live stream. Do you just download Strombot and you don't know what to do? Well, this is the guide for you. I will work you through everything you need to know in order to start using this amazing bot. Let's jump on the computer and let's have a look how Strombot looks as soon as you open it up how to clean up the UI, and how to understand what you're doing. Let's do this. All right, this is how Streambot looks. As soon as you open it up the first time, it may look intimidating, but I assure you, it's not. Cleaning up the UI. First things first, we're going to go and hit Settings, and make sure that you select Auto Open Chat on Startup, Minimize on tray so it doesn't close it completely. What we're going to concentrate now on is enable sub action and enable triggers. I will show you in a minute what do they mean, but what we are going to do now is clear it up all the options that you get when you create commands and, and, and those things. We eliminate the options that we do not need. For example, let's start from the bottom of the triggers. We do use YouTube, yes. We do use Twitch. I don't use Trovo, but if you use Trovo, leave it on. I'm gonna take it off. When you go into integration, I click on the plus because I don't use them all. So I I click on the integration so it deselects them and I only select the one that I'm actually using. For example, fourth wall, stream bot remote, and voice mod. Now we click on the minus to close it up. Elgato, the same thing. I'm gonna click on it. I only use Stream Deck, I don't use anything else. So I'm only going to click Stream Deck. I don't use Stream Labs, so I'm going to take it off. OBS, I'm going to leave it on. As far as custom, leave it there. That's fine. And when it comes to core, we click on the plus as well. I'm only going to select the one that I don't think that I don't use. And most likely you won't use either. For example, file for the watcher or at least when you start out. We leave everything MIDI, we remove MIDI, processes system, file, I.O., and we leave everything else. When it comes to sub-action, we do the same thing. So we use Twitch, we remove Trovo, streamer bot, yes. Integration, we click on the plus again. We deselect, I only use Discord and voice mod in this drop down. So they are the only two that I select. Same thing for Legato, the select and only select the only select Stream Deck. We use YouTube, we don't use Stream Labs, so we're gonna take it off. Speaker bot, we're gonna leave it there for now. This is something that I will get into the more we go on with these sort of tutorials. That is another amazing service that is by the same person who created Streambot, created also SpeakerBot, which is basically TTS on stream, text-to-speech. We'll talk about it in future videos. So we leave SpeakerBot. As far as settings, we can leave them there. If you use Polypop, leave it on. I don't use it, so I'm going to take it off. OBS, we leave it. Core. I want to say you want to leave most of them probably except for file io file tails signals and i will use uh, i will leave everything else now we clean up the internal options now we're gonna clean up the whole ui let me explain so when you go, if you just hover over what you want to remove, you just right click, you select it, boom, it goes away. Same thing for hotkeys, boom, it goes away. Voice control, we're just going to turn it off for now. 
we're going to use it in the future. Also, if you do want to re-add those tabs again down the track, you can still do it via the same method. So right clicking on MIDI, and you click on voice control, it pops up again. So they're not gone forever. So don't worry, they're not gone forever. They're just gone for now. So we clear up a bit the UI so it's easier to understand. Stream apps, the same thing. You can right click on stream labs, you remove it, polypop, you remove it. As far as platforms, we do the same. Trouble, right click, we remove it. Commands will leave it all, those will leave it all, and those will leave it all. This is a lot easier, isn't it? When it comes to platform and integrations to platforms, see how you have Twitch, we go into accounts, and this is where you sign in with your main account. You'll be asked to verify. You click authorized and you're golden. Same thing if you have a board account, you don't have to have a board account, but if you do have an alternate account or uh, you wanna create an alternate account, this is where you add it up. The only benefit to have a board account in this case is that when my messages are posted in chat, they will be set by the bot account. So instead of having, for example, WogoZYT, that is my main account, it will be WogoZ bot. I have a bot account. I made it. If you want to have it, you have it. Otherwise, not the end of the world. Same thing if you go into YouTube. Just got to agree. Then you go into account. And then you sign in with your Google. I'm not going to sign in, but this is how you sign in. And you want to make sure that you flick auto connect. Streambot, you just go into integration. Let's clean up a bit here again. We leave voice mods, Donald Drive, Pulsoid, Hyperate, TP. If you use any of these services, leave them on. I don't personally use it, so I take them off. We leave speaker bots. Twitch and forget the throwing system, we remove it. Partly.gg, we remove it. Okay, so when it comes to voice mode, you just flick auto connect, reconnect. My voice mode is not active, so it won't work. When it comes to Shrimpot website, you do want to make sure that you A, make an account, and B, you log in. This is for when it comes to, it will ask you to log in with your. Discord account, and it logs you in. This is very, very important because in case of an update, you, uh, if you're signed in with Streambot, Streambot app will notify you when it's time to update, and it will prompt you to download it, install it. You just have to click twice. If you're not signed up, it won't recognize that your version of Streambot app is outdated. So you will have to re-download again from the website and re-import all your commands, which, you know, it's a bit of a pain. So make sure that you make an account you signed in. Same thing with Stream Deck. So I have to start the server. My Stream Deck is connected to my other, <laughs> to my other Stream Deck, so it won't connect to this one. But this is how you do it. And SpeakerBot, exactly the same. You have a SpeakerBot running on your system and you connect it. Now, let's understand a bit better the interface of StreamBot. First of all, this is the main page where you will do everything. And when I mean everything, everything, you will have action cues. This is a very important tab for two reasons. First reason, 
is because you can see if there's still stuff outstanding, so stuff that has to trigger or can trigger. Cues, it's really good to know because you may have viewers that triggers a lot of commands at the same time, so you can see when is that command happening or the other command happening. It just give you a bit of an overview of the queue of all the actions that are still have to um, still have to happen. And action history is really really important. I will show you when I make a command. But bottom line is, you're not sure if a command is done right. You run it anyway, and then you go into action history and you go have a look at the variables. We're going a little bit too deep into, but bottom line is you can see where you make a mistake. You got the comments page as well, which is basically triggers. Comments are nothing else than triggers. They're called differently, but they are the same exact thing. So I'll give you an example. If someone types in your chat, exclamation mark social, that is a command but also a trigger. So because that command happened in chat, an action can happen. Those are the two platforms that we are covering in this tutorial. If kick will come along, I will review this, this video and make adjustments. But for now, we have the Twitch page so other than just the accounts, so this is the accounts tab, but there are quite a few more. So you have the channel point rewards. So those are all the channel point rewards that are present on your channel. The ones that have the purple background cannot be edited, but the one with no background, you can easily edit them because they'll be made via Streambot. Yes, you can make Trumpo Rewards for Twitch from Streambot. Same thing for polls and predictions. You can make them from here and run them again from here instead of every time have to log in on Twitch. You make sure they want to enable pyramids. You want to enable sub counter. If you have any subs in your channel, I highly recommend to um, enable the rollover. In my case, I have three. So I'm going to set three. So numbers um, that will coincide with my Twitch. Have a count again. And then settings. Uncheck ignore gift sub from gift bonds. You want to make sure that is unchecked. And then present view enabled and then live update. Stream update run game action that matches the game set on connecting with Twitch. On connect. Perfect. So we're always updated. When it comes to YouTube, you have yes, the settings. I will leave it at five minutes for YouTube. I'll show you in the future videos when it comes to point the system and everything. You want to make sure that you leave it at five minutes. What it means is StreamBot is going to check how many viewers you have every five minutes. So it can assign points uh, for watching to people that are present within the five minute mark. It just it's a nice touch, you know what I mean? Uh, there may be people with bad internet, uh, so they may come up for a minute and then come down and then come back up again. At least, you know, you know they're watching. So at least, you know, checking every five minutes, they may be, they may be there. And broadcast. This page will record all your titles and once they appear, you can even double click and edit them and it will edit them on YouTube as well, on your latest one. Last but not least, let's make a simple command. This can be for YouTube, Twitch, 
I'm just going to take the example of Twitch so I can show you as well action history. It's going to be very, very easy. Now, actions are just the names for whatever you want to happen. So we will right click, add, and then we name it socials, for example. And then if you have groups already, you can select it from drop down in case we don't have any groups. So I'll create, for example, chatbots, commands, uh, TTV. I leave everything on. As you can see, socials are already under chat documents TTV. This is really important because very, very soon, if you start taking Streambot a little bit seriously, you will have a lot of actions. So it's really good to have them separated and the camera keeps going sideways. Uh, it's really good to have them um, split by groups or by folders, so you know exactly where they belong to and what they do. Next thing that we're gonna have a look is triggers. As we mentioned earlier, triggers are basically commands. So to create a new trigger, right click again, then you go core, in this case, it, it doesn't have to be a command, but just an example. And we go command triggered. We don't have any commands, so we're gonna create a command. In this case, will be socials TTV. The group is gonna be TTV commands. So we have them split on the commands page as well. And then we write exclamation mark socials. In this case, we're making a Twitch command. So uh, we want to make sure that Twitch message is selected. And also you do want to deselect, ignore internal messages. This is important because I'll show you in a minute. Shroombot has a inbuilt chat window. And if you if you have this ignored uh, internal messages selected, whatever command you type in chat, it will not trigger. So you have to go on the platform, so YouTube or Twitch, and then type the command in there. But if you have it selected, it's gonna work. When it comes to permission, this side is for permissions. I wanna say 95% of your commands, they will be for everyone. But there are some commands like clip commands or shout out command that you wanna have only moderators trigger it. So you see how you have group permissions, you can add moderators that are not on the moderators or you can add subscribers vips you can add whomever you want or just everyone or if you click on user permission you can allow one person i don't have anyone because it's not it's not connected now but um you can search by user and only allow one two three five users to use that command that may not be in the groups like um, lack subscribers or moderators. And then once you select your group permission, also you want, there are some commands that will be a pain, like you wanna have them there for the viewers, but some of them if trigger, um, too often that can be a pain. So you can put a cooldown. So global cooldown is for the whole stream and user cooldown is per user. So for example, you can say every 60 seconds. Um, so once it gets triggered once for 60 seconds, nobody can trigger it or the, the one person here, how you say, you see here it says S, 
mean seconds. So if you type here 60, for 60 seconds, this command cannot be triggered. In this case, it's just a short command, so I leave it at zero. Then once you click OK, it will auto-populate this menu here, so you just have to click OK. And then sub-action. Sub-action is the actual, what you want to happen. So once we have the name, we have what needs to be happen in order for that action to be happen. So uh, we want to trigger our social in chat. So we right click, we go into Twitch, and we go into chat. I like to send an announcement when it's a command. So. I just say, for example, my socials are https double dash z dot net, right? And you can select if you want your bot account or your main account. I only have selected my main account, so it's gonna be my main account. And then I wanted to have, I don't know, a green, green background. And I click OK, right? So now, I click on chat on the top and the chat appeared. Keep in mind that uh, Twitch chat is connected 24 seven, YouTube only when you're live, but this is everywhere. By YouTube rules, you cannot access your chat even if it's your own channel, you can't access your chat unless you're live. So we're triggering in Twitch for this reason. So if I do socials, there you go. What was that .net? I have my other bot that is... <laughs> Everything is, is coming at the same time because I have two stream bot open. So I had... Um, I had my alert as well coming on. But see, you know, there's a lot that you can do with Streambot. But we had that in chat. This is what we wanted. So this is a basic command. Obviously, in the next iterations of this tutorial, we're going to go deeper and deeper and deeper. So we'll do alerts as well. We'll do a lot of other fun things. But for now, this is just how you start up. The last thing that I want to show you, and this is somewhat important because one of the, I want to show you this as well. So this is from Streambot extensions. So those are available to everyone. They're free. There are a lot of stuff that has been made by other creators. Um, and the only thing that you have to do is import a code into Streambot. I said I wasn't going to edit this video, but I think I have to. I forgot something that I promised you. I promised you that I'm going to show you action cues. Now, uh, action cues, so we, we, the, we trigger the command socials. So if you click with the left and then right click, you can see expect variables where after run, and it gives you this page. This page is really, really important because it shows you all the variables that you can possibly use into a command. We'll talk about variables in the future videos, but this is how you have a look if you know there is something else that you can add to your action, to your sub-action, or if you made a mistake, this is how you see how to correct it. Now, back to the video. How do you import and you export? For example, click on export, Right-click on social, add to export, and then let's bring it up again. So as you can see here, we go export to file, 
and we save it somewhere that we can remember, for example, downloads, and we call it command, and then save. So now, it asks you if you want to click your export, yes. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to delete this action. So let's say we don't have anything right now. So what we're going to do now is import, and then we go have a look at the file. We go have a look at the file, which is here, command. We just select it and drag it into, see how the icon has changed now? You just release it, and it's going to have the code up here. Or if you do have a code, you just have to copy and paste it into code string. You just copy and paste it over there. And then you just click import. There are one items that will be overwritten in import. Yes, that's fine. Commands that are being imported, they will be set to disabled. Be sure to add this command to enable them and set any permission desired. That's fine. See how? Oh. There you go. So we got the, the, the command that we created earlier. The only thing that you have to do when you import stuff, you just go, uh, th there you go. So when you go into commands, you will see that it's red. You just have to hover over it, right click, and click on enabled, becomes black, and now you can use it again. Easy guys, I know, this I'm gonna keep moving. Now, this is just the, we're just scratching the surface with this video. I know it's not gonna be edited as much, but I want it to be as easy as possible. So I went slow and I tried to show everything. Um, I also made a blog post that is available. I'll leave the link in the description down below wogoz.net slash blog is the first blog post that I made. And everything that we talk about today, except for import and export, is going to be in the blog with pictures as well. If you like this video, I'm sure you will like this video next to this video next. Until next week, or next time, or roommates.